It's a beautiful Easter morning across central Illinois. We're tracking today's temperatures and we'll break down your hour by hour forecast. Plus construction in Springfield. What streets will be closed for more than a year while railroad improvements continue? Good morning and happy Easter. Thanks for joining us on WAND's Weekend Wake Up. Jesse, I'm loving the sunshine, clear skies I'm seeing in the tower cam. Are we going to yeah. keep having these? Yeah, absolutely gorgeous conditions today. The Easter Bunny is uh, bringing us uh, warmer temperatures, sunshine, and uh, in terms of moving forward, we're going to continue to just kind of hop on up Love as it. we go through the next uh, several days. Let's talk about today. It's a little bit of a cool start out there this morning. Notice how temperatures for some of us still in the 30s, 34 in Decatur, 38 in Champaign, 44 in Springfield. Yes, many of us in those 40s right now, so it's a little cool. Otherwise, quiet winds are relatively quiet at the moment. We are going to talk about those winds continuing to shift to be more southerly, and so that's one of the factors helping to warm us up as we look at this warming pattern. The sunshine, the other factor. Notice how you can see a couple of clouds. Otherwise, all quiet on satellite and radar. Flooring America camera, EIU's campus in Charleston. Uh, this morning, beautiful sight right there with that live look. Notice how as we go through the next coming hours. We'll continue to hop our way on up to the upper 60s. I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of us southward maybe reach 70. 70s in that forecast long term. Also, 80 degree temperatures in the seven day. We'll talk about that straight ahead. Carly. Celebrating Easter. Dozens of people in Springfield got the chance to get a free ham for Easter. Senator Doris Turner teamed up with other nonprofits to give out more than 100 hams to people in the community on Saturday. WND's Deja Clayton has more. Free hams for an excellent Easter dinner. And the eggs was kind of an added plus. We had advertised for a ham giveaway and then we actually had eggs too. With help from Meridian Health Choice, 150 people drove up to grab hams and a dozen eggs. We advertised that it was going to go from one to three and we have people actually lined up starting at around 10 o'clock. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity for the community and I'm excited and happy that we're able to do it. Senator Doris Turner says this isn't her first go round. I actually started doing these types of things during COVID. We did a number of giveaways and um, and so we have try really tried to continue with that. But it's not just Senator Turner. How you doing? Behind her are a team of volunteers to help make events like this possible. It's intergenerational. So for instance, uh, out here today, I have a, a grandfather of uh, who is out here with his son and his grandson. I have my son and my grandson out here, you know, working. So it's, uh, you know, that fosters that spirit of volunteerism uh, in our younger generation. So it's not only beneficial for those that are getting the food, but it also fosters that sense of volunteerism and giving back to the community. In Springfield, Deja Clayton, WAND News. No one was hurt after an early morning garage fire in Springfield yesterday. The, defi the fire department says they were called to the 2400 block of Wilshire just after 4 o'clock yesterday. When crews arrived, they found the fire in an unattached garage had started to spread to a nearby home. Crews were able to keep it from spreading. There's no word yet on what caused that fire. Officials in Danville are investigating a house fire there as well. Crews were called to the 400 block of Sherman shortly after 6 o'clock yesterday. The two-story home was fully engulfed when crews arrived, but after a search, no one was in the home. Officials say the house was recently vacated. No word yet on the cause of the fire. A new beginning for a longtime Christian County company. WND's Doug Wolf reports on how a fire will create a new opportunity for the company and economic development in Pena. The shovels were out and ready for groundbreaking on a new 100,000 square foot facility for Great Western Products in Pena. We've been very blessed since we had our fire uh, last May and there uh, have been a lot of good people doing a lot of good work to uh, make this happen. The fire was at Great Western's plan in Assumption last spring. Shortly after the fire, Great Western located in a temporary facility. Last summer, conversations were underway, which led to plans for the new plan in Painted's Industrial Park, according to Economic Development Director Kirby Kasner. Not only are we going to be having a new large facility in our industrial park, but it also serves as one of the catalysts that is um, drawing in outside investment and interest into the Painted community. Great Western will be producing food-grade cooking oils in their new location. 
We've been uh, processing popcorn, making the popping oils and toppings and things that you enjoy in the movie theaters and concession stands across the country and actually across the world. John Gardner of the Pena Industrial Development Corporation says Great Western is the type of company they want in Pena. After their fire, they were shut down for three months and they maintained all of their employees and kept them on the payroll and asked them to go out and do community service group work. Great Western will have 30 employees when they open the new location and could eventually hire 20 to 30 more in the future. Doug Wolf reporting WAND News. Great Western says it hopes to have its new plant operational during the first quarter of 2024. The facility will be a multi-million dollar investment by the company. Several Norfolk Southern train cars derailed in Pittsburgh yesterday. This comes after the company faced heavy scrutiny for the derailment of cars containing hazardous material in East Palestine, Ohio. In Pittsburgh, five empty cars left the track. No injuries have been reported and crews are currently working to clear the site. Earlier this year, a train derailment in Ohio forced the evacuation of part of a town. Toxic chemicals sickened people nearby and killed thousands of fish. Our I-team reached out to local officials to see what would happen if Decatur had a similar disaster. The city has three rail yards run by railroads, and at least two industries have switchers moving rail cars on their property. Norfolk Southern's Decatur yard is the largest flat yard in North America. Hazmat training takes place on a regular basis and at times with the assistance of the major railroads. So we have a book that will tell us by the placard on the, uh, the rail car and also it has an ID number on it that can tell us, tell us everything, where it's been, where it's going, um, what exactly is in that car at the time. Norfolk Southern has had 20 hazmat spills in the last eight years. CEO Alan Shaw defends the company's safety record. Construction is now underway on new underpasses at Madison in Jefferson Streets in Springfield. This is all part of the Springfield Rail Improvement Project. The price tag for this portion of the project is more than $68 million. Madison and Jefferson Streets will be closed between 9th and 11th Streets for an estimated 14 months. The project consists of lowering Madison and Jefferson Streets and building new railroad bridges. This is all to create a new set of double tracks for North Norfolk Southern, as well as proposed Union Pacific Railroad and Amtrak lines. We are fixing decades old problems, creating good jobs, bringing people into downtown and connecting Chicago and Springfield and St. Louis. Madison and Jefferson streets carry a combined 20,000 vehicles a day, serving as a critical link for police, firefighters and two hospitals. When completed, $475 million will have been invested into the rail improvements project. The risks of one social media app, why local universities are banning TikTok and the cybersecurity concerns it's created. Plus investigating artificial intelligence, why legislators are struggling to keep up with new technology as it comes out.